Trio's pivotal condensation is a very efficient method in solving for the determinant of a big matrix. There are certain drawbacks to be considered though. Learn them here in numerical solutions to see problems. Trio's pivotal condensation computes for the determinant of big matrices by only using a single matrix. However, the big condition with this method is to search for elements which are valued at positive 1. Let's have matrix D for an example. It doesn't contain any element which is positive 1, so we need to create it. So as not to simplify each element, we can work on the third row. Note that the elements are 4, 0, negative 2, and 6. If we divide all elements in the row by negative 2, row 3 would have negative 2, 0, 1, and negative 3. Use 1 as the pivot element. It is located at 3, 3. So from the matrix, Taking the pivot element A33 as the intersection of its row and column, we can determine the reflected factors. Starting from A11, which is 3, this can be subtracted by negative 2 times 2, the vertical and horizontal reflected factors. Moving on to the next element in the column, we take negative 2 minus the reflected factors of negative 2 times 0. The third element in the first column will be subtracted by negative 2 times 2. On to the next column. We start on the first row with element of negative 2 subtracted by 0 times 2. For the new element 2, 2, the reflected factors are 0 and 0. The last element down the second column is 3, and this is subtracted by 0 times 2. On to the third column. The first element on top is subtracted by negative 3 times 2. Next is the element valued at 3, and this is decreased by negative 3 times 0. The last element in the third column is 4 minus negative 3 times 2. So since the whole 3 by 3 matrix is already complete, simplify each element and have the following new elements. So the reduced matrix has order 3 where we can find the determinant through shortcut methods. Do not forget that there is a negative 2 scalar. Using Saris rule, we again mirror the first two columns and then compute for the products of the elements in diagonals. The first has 7 times negative 2 times 10, which gives negative 140. The next has negative 2 times 3 times 1, giving negative 6. The last diagonal has 11 times negative 2 times 3, resulting to negative 66. Then subtract the products from the anti-diagonals, first of which has 1 times negative 2 times 11, which becomes negative 22. The next has 3 by 3 by 7, yielding 63. The last anti-diagonal has 10 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is 40. So simplify these products into negative 2 times negative 140 minus 6 minus 66, minus the quantity of negative 22, plus 63, plus 40, which results to 586. Another option to start a computation is to use row 2. Divide each element by negative 2, which would give 1 
1, 0, and negative 1.5. Since we already have 1 in the matrix, we can do the condensation. Let's choose element 2, 2. So by focusing on element 2, 2, we highlight the second column and second row for the reflected factors. The remaining elements are used in the reduced form. The scalar for this matrix has the constant negative 1 raised to the indices 2, 2, then the extracted factor earlier, which is negative 2. Now for the first element on the first column, we subtract 1 times negative 2 from 3. Element 2, 1 is 4. Then we take out the factors 1 and 0. The last element in the column is negative 3. Its reflected factors are 1 and 3. The second column starts with 2, and its reflected factors are 0 times negative 2. The other element in this column is valued at negative 2. Then it is subtracted by 0 times 0. The last element of the second column is 2 minus the factors of 0 times 3. Let's move on to the last column, then start again from the first row. The element is 5, then subtract negative 1.5 times negative 2. The following element is 6 minus negative 1.5 times 0. The last element to complete the matrix is 4, decreased by negative 1.5 times 3. With all elements already identified, simplify each of them to have the reduced 3 by 3 matrix. With the new elements, 5, 2, 2 for the first row, followed by 4, negative 2, and 6 in the second, and negative 6, 2, and 8.5 in the third row. We use SARS rule and mirror the first two columns, then solve for the diagonals. Firstly, 5 times negative 2 times 8.5 is equal to 85. The second diagonal has 2 times 6 times negative 6, which is negative 72. 2 times 4 times 2, which gives 16 for the third diagonal. The secondary diagonals have first negative 6 times negative 2 times 2, which is 24. The next has 2 by 6 by 5, which is 60. The last has 8.5 times 4 times 2, which is equal to 68. Now determinant D has negative 2 multiplied by the positives and the negatives, which are negative 85, minus 72 plus 16 minus the quantity of 24 plus 60 plus 68 and this gives 586 just the same. Now, there might be some who would be tempted to use the third column of the matrix as most elements are 2. It would be easy to generate 1 if we divide this column by 2. However, Factoring or extracting a common factor is done only through rows. The reason will be explained in more detail when you reach the application of determinants in solutions to systems of linear equations. Let's continue the condensation to prove that we would get an erroneous determinant. We use element 1, 3. Using the first row and third column as pivot row and column, we can outline the 3 by 3 matrix. The scalar has negative 1 raised to the indices 1 plus 3. Then this is multiplied by the extracted factor of the third column, positive 2. Start by taking the reflected factors for the first element in the first column. They are 3 times 0. The second element has reflected factors of 3 times negative 1. The third element is negative 3 
minus 3 times 1. The second column has top element of negative 2 minus the reflected factors of negative 2 times 0. The succeeding element is 0 minus the factors negative 2 times negative 1. The third element in the second column is 3 minus negative 2 times 1. In the third column, we have 3 minus 5 times 0. And the last element in the third column has 4 less 5 times 1. And the last element in the third column has 4 less 5 times 1. Simplify each element and get the 3 by 3 matrix. With the reduced matrix D, we have negative 2, negative 2, and 3, then 1, negative 2, and 2, and lastly, negative 6, 5, and negative 1. Apply Saros rule and mirror the first two columns. Now start with the first diagonal and multiply negative 2, negative 2, and negative 1, which makes negative 4. The next diagonal has negative 2 times 2 times negative 6, which is 24. The last has 3 times 1 times 5, which is 15. For the secondary diagonals, the first has negative 6 times negative 2 by 3, giving 36. The following anti-diagonal has 5, 2, and negative 2, giving negative 20. The last has negative 1, 1, and negative 2, which is 2. Add the positive and subtract the negatives, and then multiply the answer by the scalar 2. Matrix D with the factored column is just 34, compared to the determinant of the original matrix, which was solved as 586. Mm -hmm.